everybody, my name is Julio Salgado, project manager at Culture Strike. Welcome to another edition of Taco Talk, where we talk to some of your favorite activist artists and talk to them about their work. And we do that while eating delicious tacos. Today, we're in Boyle Heights at Un Solo Sol with our guest, Yosima Reyes. Yay! Hi. Thank you for joining us. What did you get? I got beef saltado. It's like a mix, a Peruvian mix of something, but it looks so bomb. I love this place. If you want to get to know me, I'm probably going to be here all the time. I got potato tacos. Potato tacos. Like... Taquitos? Taquitos. Now that we had some food and, you know, have time to, like, you know, catch up on the cheese man, all that good stuff, let's continue our conversation. How old were you when you, like, started? I'm, I'm taking it back, back to, like, baby Yossi. When you realized that writing was that thing that you wanted to do? Well, when I was younger, I used to be a really shy kid. I used to not really talk. I didn't like raising my hand in classrooms. And also, I was, like, I was always aware that I was kind of queer. Uh, <laughs> so I was always kind of, like, I didn't want to be noticed. I didn't want attention. I didn't want people to kind of like see me so I like, reverted to books I started reading at a young age my mom was because she didn't want me to like forget Spanish she put me in, in um, ESL classes I'm happy she did that because I can read and I can write in Spanish in middle school I started hanging out in the library and then I, we had a librarian and she would recommend books to me and at the beginning I used to read like those middle school kid books like you know like the box cart kids and the baby oh and the babysitters clubs but it was like so kitty I was like I'm ready for something else and then one of the librarians just gave me the color purple by Alice Walker and I was like fucking seventh grade and I'm like oh my god this book is so good but I always kept a journal I always kept writing because I was trying to figure out who I was as a person like dude I'm balancing all these identities who am I and it wasn't until I was in a junior in high school that my my one of my teachers like yo you write you have all these stories you should submit a poem to this contest and then I submitted it. And then it won a prize. My teacher then invited me to a slam. I never heard of slam. I never know what spoken word was. And I performed my poem, but it didn't win. It didn't get anything. I got so mad and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna just kill it. I'm gonna write a three minute poem. It's gonna be badass and I'm gonna perform it. I'm gonna practice and practice and practice. I'm gonna show them what I got. By my sixth performance, I was already at the National Poetry Slam. Was art and you know, and reading like something that your 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 family pushed for you to do? Or was that did you feel like you were going at it alone? So I feel like I grew up with my grandparents and my grandma, but my grandma was always working. So I mean, I picked it up on my own. And my grandma was just more like, as long as you're not out in the streets doing bad things, then you should be fine, right? Now that I'm older and they ask me like, what do you do? They realize like, yo, Yossi was putting in work since he was young. Now they kind of get it. Like, oh, he he does. They send presentation. You know, el va a dar presentaciones. They don't know what I'm talking about. They don't know what I write. They're like, the presentaciones. I, I'm working on translating it now so that it's fully in Spanish and they can understand the stories. You published your first chapbook when you were 19. How was that process? Like, somebody was to ask you, like a 19 year old kid was to ask you, like, hey, I want to do my own chapbook. What was the process? For me, it was like I was. Performing, you know, performances I was 16, doing shows, doing different things. When I was 19, I had my first show at La Peña in Berkeley, and then get a kid a call. Um, and this woman says like, oh, um, Carlos Santana wants to come see your show. Oh, shit. Uh, and I, for me, it was like, I thought it was just another random Carlos, you know? Okay, <laughs> Carlos can come, buy the ticket. But then I, I, I'm about to perform, and then in walks Carlos Santana. They told me he was gonna bring a friend. I'm like, okay, cool. So it was Carlos Santana and Harry Belafonte. What? Uh-huh. They sat through my set, and I got them performing, and they're like, we would like to take you out to dinner. And I was like, oh my god, I'm down. Months pass, I'm still traveling, touring, giving different talks. I get a call and it's like, oh, Carlos Santana is interested in working with you on a project. He asked me to write a poem for him and film a video and it was the opening video for his concert. You know, when the concert opened, there's always a video. So it was my poem um, on the big screen. And then he asked me like, oh, I wanna, I wanna, um, pay you for your work how much you were you gonna charge me I was 19 nobody when people ask me at that time like how much do you charge I feel like that's one of the struggles in artists especially artists of color that we don't get trained to kind of like how much is your work worth um, I didn't know what to charge so I was like you know what honestly 
I want to I want a book. All I want is to produce a book because I feel like I'm doing this work and I want people to understand that this is not a hobby. I want this to be my career. I want this to be something that I'm going to have longevity and I want to leave a trace that I actually produce something. Just like, okay, find out how much it is and then we'll, we'll, we'll release it and we'll publish it. And at 20, I had my book release party. We packed the house. I sold it. Um, it was just a little book titled for color boys to speak softly. So there you go. All you need to do your first book is have uh, Carlos Santana, Harry Belafonte, your audience. But more than that, it was like it was the fact that you had work, like you had produced a lot of work. Where can uh, folks see the the latest work? Yosimarreyes.com. And the Instagram, Yosirey. Okay. And no Snapchat. <laughs> no, don't follow me on Snapchat. <laughs> oh my eyebrows. Yes. <laughs> Awkward. Enjoy. So thank you. Ha, 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 ha.